Time now to go back to Hayward, Wisconsin, where they're thinking snow, snow, snow. They need tonight's storm to hit if the American Birkebeiner ski race is going to have any chance of going off on Saturday. Well, snow or no snow, they are having fun, and we join uh, Mark Rosen and Liz Collin again out there on Main <laughs> Street. How's it going? Hey guys, we are having fun, no doubt about that. <laughs> you know, it's really been fun also to learn about the history of this thing. Oh it dates back to 1973, and since then, it's grown into the largest ski race in North America. So, really, perhaps the chance of a, a down year here is not going to no. dampen anyone's spirits. It's happened learned. before. I mean, they yeah. call it Berkey fever, and it's still alive and well here in Hayward. And we're going to hear from a guy who has been here from the beginning and ha has an understanding of what all started. 1973, the first race. There were 35, exactly 35 people. John Kotar is a Birkenbeiner founder. He skied the very first one when it wasn't much of an event. The race was advertised heavily by the proprietor of uh, Telemark Resort here. But of course, that was way before cross-country skiing became much of a sport in this country. Despite the slow start, the guy who started it all, a Norwegian named Tony Wise, kept pushing. He'd already started Telemark Downhill Ski Resort, then realized cross country was the next big thing. So he built world class trails. In order to promote it, of course, he felt he needed something. Uh, and what better than a big race, a marathon, 50 kilometers, a number that most people couldn't imagine anyone skiing. From the humble beginnings of just 35 racers, Tony Wise built the largest ski race in North America with a little old-fashioned exaggeration. His advertising, if you look at the newspaper clippings of that time, he exaggerated wildly. It was Olympic style race, uh, Olympic caliber skiers, because he invited one or two out of Norway who were third rate by that time, but nevertheless good skiers, of course. But he, he, he was a promoter. He was, he was Barnum and Bailey of skiing, really. And that worked. <laughs> uh, yeah, John, John Kotar has skied in 40 of them. How about that? He was standing in the American Birkenbeiner Museum, which just opened last summer. I had a chance to tour it this afternoon, and it's really impressive. You have a chance to come up in Hayward, no matter what time of year, it's worth a visit because it really has a unique history of this event. Yeah, and we're going to have more on the history, the Norwegian history surrounding the Birkenbeiner coming up tonight at 10, guys, along with the kids' uh, fun run. They were supposed to be skiing today, of course, but, but they were running about a half mile or so, so we'll show you that tonight at 10. The kids had fun. And you did no too because you joined them. And you I were, did, of course. Uh, boy, of course, it was me, Amelia. That's going to surprise that you. Doesn't surprise Rosie. Rosie was a great oh. spectator. Oh. Rosie, please, oh. no yeah. snow. Don't start pushing kids up there. <laughs> All right. We'll see you at 10. <laughs> Thank you.